I'd like to go ahead to our next speaker, uh, Michelle Dean, who will be speaking to us from um, Cal State University Channel Islands on understanding the social behavior of girls with ASD. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Dean. Thanks for coming. Hi. Uh, the Art of Camouflage, Gender Differences, and the Social Behaviors of Girls and Boys with Autism. We have a great deal of difficulty identifying and diagnosing girls with autism without cognitive impairment. And there may be a male bias in our perception of autism. Girls with autism have been described as being better able to camouflage their symptoms of autism and to use compensatory behaviors that mask their social challenges. Camouflage and compensatory behaviors refer to echoing or mimicking the social behaviors they see other kids do. But when girls reenact these behaviors, they're described as looking superficial and seem to lack understanding of the underlying motivations that inform our social interactions. So the word camouflage highlights the importance of environment. Understanding the way boys and girls with autism interact with or blend into the natural social landscape at school may give us a better understanding of why it is difficult to detect autism in girls. We know that children with autism have a great deal of difficulty making friends at school. We know less about gender differences in the social behaviors of autism and the actual experiences that children with autism have. But we do know that children with and without autism tend to segregate by gender when they play at school. And in typically developing populations, it is widely accepted that there are gender differences in the way that boys and girls socialize. Boys are more likely to be playing games, rough and tumble play. Girls are more likely to have intimate conversations. So, in order for girls with autism to blend into the landscape at school, their social landscape is different than boys with autism. So in our research, we ask the following research questions. To what extent do environmental factors like gender-related social behaviors and activities play a role in helping girls with autism to mask their symptoms? Are girls with autism better at camouflaging their symptoms of autism and using compensatory behaviors to mitigate their social difficulties? And are the symptoms of autism more obvious and easier to detect in boys? To examine how children interact with their social environment at school, we examined observation data of 185 children with and without autism. In this is a secondary analysis of data that were collect, collected for a large uh, randomized control trial of a social skills intervention. All of these data were baseline data or collected before the start of the intervention. In the original study, there were 24 girls with high functioning autism or autism without cognitive impairment, and so we used every girl in the study. Boys were selected from a larger pool of boys that were matched to the girls with autism by age, IQ, and city of residence. The kids in the study lived in Baltimore, Ann Arbor, Los Angeles, and Seattle. Uh, we verified the diagnosis of, uh, diagnosis of autism using the ADOS. All the children with autism had an IQ over 70. And all children with autism were educated in the general education classroom for more than 80% of the school day. Now, to determine what the social landscape on the playground looks like, we also used data from typically developing children. We had 69 girls and 68 boys. These children were selected for the original study because they were classmates of one of the participants with autism. In addition, their teachers, their general education teacher, nominated them to participate because they had good social skills, positive pro-social behavior, behaviors. All children were observed on the playground for 10 to 15 minutes using the playground observation of peer engagement, or what we call the Pope. Each line here represents a one minute interval. The Pope yields quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data refers to engagement state, and qualitative data is a short description of what the kids were doing during that one minute interval. The variables of focus for this study are solitary, 
the child is alone or with an adult. Joint engaged, the child is actively socializing with a peer or peers. Game, the child is actively playing a game with rules with a peer or peers. Children were observed by graduate students or research assistants who were uh, trained to a reliability criteria of at least 0.85 and to maintain coding consistency, two coders randomly and independently coded 20% of the observations. So here's an example of th what three minutes looks like. Joint engage, walking and talking with one girl, happy. Joint engage, walking and talking with one girl. Joint engage, talking with one girl on the jungle gym, laughing. For this analysis, we used concurrent mixed methods in which quantitative and qualitative data were collected at the same time and analyzed concurrently. Our analytic design was an exploratory case study design with each group representing one case. Quantitative, for the quantitative analysis, we examined the frequency that each group spent some time in solitary joint engage or game. The, then we tested between group differences and the average amount of time that each group spent in each engagement state. Qualitatively, we identified, the, the, we identified each activity that each participant engaged in in each engagement state. And then we identified what the most popular activities in each engagement state in each group. Once we were able to, de to develop a social profile for each participant, we then went to the qualitative data to select a representative example of what the social behaviors looked like at school. The social landscape typically developing girls. So this graph represents the proportion of typically developing girls that had spent some time in each engagement state. So typically developing girls, the joint engage was the most popular engagement state. In addition, typically developing girls spent on average more time than boys in joint engage. The most popular activities for typically developing girls were talking and flitting. <laughs> flitting. We coded an activity as flitting when a participant engaged in three or more activities within one observation period and spent about at equal amounts of time in each activity. So what typically developing girls looked like were joint engage, walking with two girls, smiling and talking, joint engage, sitting in a circle, pretending to paint each other's nails, and they did this for two minutes. Uh, three girls get up, they hold hands and they start running, and then they start chasing a boy, laughing and happy. The social landscape, typically developing boys. Typically developing boys, uh, game was most popular, followed pretty closely by joint engage. Although, on average, boys, typically developing boys, spent significantly more time in game than girls. The most popular activities for boys were first, ball games, and second, talking. So a representative example of what it looks like to be a typically developing boy on the playground looks like this. Joint engage, getting a game organized, going to invite kids to play the game, playing handball, gets out, has a conversation on the bench, but still watching and paying attention to the game. Girls with autism. For girls with autism, joint engage was tied with solitary. Girls with autism uh, spent their time in joint engage or solitary. The most popular activities for girls with autism were talking, like typically developing girls, and their second most popular activities, there was a tie with flitting between solitary activities, playing on the play structure alone, or playing ball alone. A representative example of what a girl with autism looked like on the playground was, uh, picture a caterpillar painted on a playground, and the girls were hopping from one piece of the caterpillar to the other. So joint engage caterpillar activity with four girls. Walked away from the girls, walked close to boys, no talking. Standed, standing near a group of girls, not part of the group, but close. Initiates to the girls to do something else. They have a short conversation. Boys with autism. Solitary was the most popular engagement state for boys with autism. In fact, a significant interaction effect indicated that boys with autism spent significantly more time being solitary than every other group. So not surprisingly, the most popular activities for boys were both solitary activities, and they were 
talking to an adult, and wandering. So being a boy with autism, a representative example of what a boy with autism looked like in this group is sitting alone eating a snack, an aide comes up to talk to him, another aide comes, to talk, comes up to talk to the first aide, the boy gets up, walks to the playground, wandering around with his head down alone. So our findings suggest that there is some support to the, uh, the camouflage hypothesis. The fluidity of female social groups seems to provide an ideal backdrop to conceal girls with autism who tend to be hovering close by. So when we think about playgrounds, an adult supervisor, a playground attendant would be scanning the, off, uh, scanning the playground, but this would be insufficient to identify the social challenges of girls with autism because they look like typically developing girls. Except for typically developing girls are moving fluidly from group to group, whereas girls with autism are moving back and forth, weaving between joint engage and solitary. Joint engage, and period, uh, joint engage periods were interrupted with solitary periods, which suggests that although social challenges might be concealed by adults on the playground, they don't appear to be concealed by other peers. In contrast, the male landscape seems to make it easier to detect the social challenges of boys with autism. Boys primarily played games. And when you think about games, the structure of games, there's one large group playing a game for almost all the entire duration of recess. So it would be very easy to detect the boy with autism because he wasn't playing the game. So simply scanning the playground environment would be sufficient to identify the social challenges of boys. So our findings do uh, support the camouflage hypothesis. And they also suggest that there may be a male bias in our perception of autism. If school practitioners or practitioners in general are looking for social isolation to detect social challenges at school, then girls with autism will remain unidentified and overlooked. Social challenges exist in girls and boys with autism, but withdrawal and exclusion may be more nuanced and less obvious in female populations. <coughs> so for future directions, we need to weigh the social landscape when designing social interventions for kids with autism at school. For the boys with autism in this study, they would need an intervention that targets their, solid, their being in a solitary state to help them move from solitary into joint engagement. We also really need to consider that the male social landscape is way more physically demanding than the female social landscape. For girls, we would want to acknowledge that they're already in joint engaged, but increase the duration of time that they're in joint engaged. How do we help them stay in joint engaged? And that may be due to a quality of their interactions. So perhaps we need to work on social interactions and improving the quality. And more work really needs to be done to examine intimate inter social interactions so we can understand where the breakdown occurs and be even more specific in our interventions. Finally, perhaps we have underutilized peers as a source of information about the social challenges of kids at school. And future, future research may want to consider the peer perspective to help us gain more understanding about the social challenges of girls with autism and boys with autism. <laughs> so also thank you, Connor Kazari and uh, Health, and Human, Health Resources and Service Administration for funding the study and research assistants, uh, Kate Rydell and Marta Weirga.